be entirely honest, I've found the whole conversation around uh, miners buying up graphics cards that gamers want to get their hands on to be, well, maybe boring is not the right word, but done to death, right? We've seen mining booms year after year for the past, I mean, what, at this point, basically 10 years. And at least from my perspective, I think the reasons they happen and why they happen the way they happen including the responses from companies, is well understood. Or, or at least I thought it was. But I saw a poll on Twitter today where Don Charlie and, you know, Meyer Tech Rants was actually a guest on Broken Silicon. So these are people I like, but they were talking about how NVIDIA and AMD should introduce measures to combat GPU cryptocurrency mining, you know, whether it's driver profiles that hinder mining performance or restricting and halting sales from AIBs and OEMs to miners. And I just... I just feel like there's a lot of misconceptions about what's going on with mining and why and, and what options AMD and NVIDIA have to try to prevent miners from getting it versus gamers. So so I wasn't going to do a video today, but but now I think I kind of have to because there's a lot that I have to say to just kind of hopefully set the record straight about what's going on, right? And I suppose the first thing I'd want to talk about is the suggestion that AMD and NVIDIA should, you know, not allow mining in the drivers, which would do absolutely nothing. And I believe a lot of this misconception that this is even possible comes from the idea that there are just people, you know, buying up a dozen cards and downloading AMD drivers. Those people exist, but those are not the ones causing these insane levels of of increased demand from the mining side mining is not niche anymore there are multi-billion dollar companies with warehouses full of graphics cards where they have the money to hire people to work on them 24 7 and in fact have enough money to hire their own chip designers and then, of course, they have enough money to hire people to write their own BIOSes and drivers. Could be ex-NVIDIA employees or ex-AMD employees. And they could write these drivers in a country outside of the United States that maybe AMD and NVIDIA can't do anything about it. Too bad. We have the code over here. We're leaking it online. Deal with it. So these firms don't care if AMD does something in the adrenaline drivers. They'll write their own drivers and their own signed BIOSes if necessary this is a major industry in fact at this point i know that they sometimes even commission their own board designs and coolers which is usually just like a leftover cooler from some cheaper card but they do this they they customize everything all they need is the dies at this point which to be honest nvidia has been selling to mining firms directly right there's really almost no way around it once a mining boom happens, it happens. And there's just different ways on playing it if you're a company. I'm not saying this like I agree with them or want this, by the way. I'm just explaining that it basically just comes down to, well, how are you going to handle it? Because it's happening. You can't stop them from using it. This isn't like a happy accident that graphics cards are good at mining. Mining algorithms are built to run well specifically on gaming graphics cards. This is on purpose. Like Ethereum was built to use a lot of RAM and have increasing RAM requirements over time. So it would need the newest gaming graphics cards, right? Because the whole idea is to democratize the coin production across as many people as possible. And a lot of gamers own computer hardware. So they literally want gamers to be mining right? That's how these algorithms are designed. And if you did something in a BIOS that even nerfed one type of algorithm, they could switch to a new one. And other cryptocurrencies have done this before, right? You know, Bitcoin can't do this because it has no leadership, but they're not mining Bitcoin. They're mining Ethereum and all the other altcoins, right? So again, which I guess is another thing to bring up. Bitcoin isn't the problem here. It's if the altcoins rise, right? That, that That's the issue. But anyways, the point is this. There will always be algorithms out there designed to run on gaming graphics cards. And these companies are now big enough to do their own drivers and BIOSes. So, well, yeah, then at a certain point you would say, well, why don't they just literally make a gaming only graphics card and a mining only graphics card design? And well, 
first of all, AMD has attempted to semi do this with RDNA 2. There were little things done when possible in the architecture of Big Navi to make it not ideal at mining performance. And I verified this with my testing of a 6800 XT myself. That review is coming up soon, by the way. But the point is, it's like 20 30 percent better than a 5700 xt despite being clocked wildly faster with double the compute units or really well not quite with the 6800 xt but you see my point right the 6900 xt is double the compute units it has infinity cache which helps reduce latency and a lot of these algorithms love low latency amd did intentionally design big navi to be as little good as mining as possible but at a certain point if you nerfed certain things in its architecture, it's just going to be bad at everything else it was intended to be good at anyways. So there's only so much AMD can do, and they did do this. Well, again, NVIDIA has just decided to kind of embrace it and try to control the supply to miners themselves, cutting AIBs out of the equation. But yeah, so then why don't they just design a mining-only graphics card? Well, how would you do that, right? Are you going to do it on 7 nanometer? So you're going to spend $100 million, which is what the cost is now, to make a specific chip for one use to be made at TSMC. And then you're going to wait nine months for it to come out, assuming you don't need to retap it out because it had some hardware issue or something. Basically, you're saying you're going to spend $100 million and wait a year to get a mining-only card out. And by the time it comes out, the market could have collapsed. And now you have spent all this money for nothing that could have just gone into making a new gaming graphics card right and we saw amd and the first big mining boob tried to massively increase supply and they almost went bankrupt when their cards flooded the market nvidia did the same thing not having learned the lesson amd did before when they found their pascal cards were good at mining you see kepler really wasn't good at mining that's why they didn't get affected as much in 2013 but anyways and yeah, they barely skated by without having a catastrophic loss in profit a few quarters. Although, they did get sued over lying about why profits were down, as they called it the Fortnite boom. I'm sorry, I really do got to say that that's hilarious that they say, look guys, our cards are selling so well because uh, Fortnite's so popular beyond comprehension. Yeah, it is beyond comprehension. We think it's miners, we think you're lying, and we're suing you. Furthermore, even if AMD, for example, did design some mining-centric die in an attempt to get miners to stop buying up gaming graphics cards, it's, it's really unlikely it would be that much better at mining Ethereum, for example, compared to a gaming card from like NVIDIA that seems to be really good at it anyways. Uh, you know, people like Bitmain did attempt to make Ethereum ASICs in the past with a lot of people saying this will kill GPU mining. It didn't do anything to GPU mining because the algorithm was built to run well on GPUs. And furthermore, if AMD were to design this on 7 nanometer, how does this even help? You're using up some of TSMC's capacity anyways. But then you might say, oh, well, why don't they just make it on global foundries? Well, then they're not going to buy it because if it's on 14 nanometer, it's going to mine far less efficiency than the latest 7 nanometer cards from AMD or 8 nanometer cards from NVIDIA. There's no way around it, right? So in summary, what am I saying? No matter how you dice it, these algorithms are built to be good at mining on graphics cards. And if you try to limit their a graphics card's ability to mine in the driver or BIOS level, they will write their own drivers and BIOSes anyways. If you try to limit it on the silicon level, there's only so much you can do, as we've seen with RDNA 2, before you would limit performance in other non-mining applications. And designing a custom die for mining costs a lot of money, takes a lot of time, and has a ton of risk that has cost these companies a lot of money in the past when they weren't played correctly. The fact of the matter is when a mining boom happens, it just kind of happens. And it's just up to how AMD or an NVIDIA want to play it. AMD lately has taken the route of just saying, well, we'll increase production by maybe 20% for the mining side they're actually increasing it more than that because of gamer demand as well by the way but we can't like triple capacity because we almost went out of business the last time we did and nvidia is saying well you know what we're going to cut out the middleman and just sell them directly to the miners themselves in an attempt to both make more profits for themselves 
Uh, you got to respect how good NVIDIA is at playing the game, I guess. But then also make it so maybe there's less miners trying to buy up the gaming cards in bulk. Well, that doesn't really seem to be working out anyways. But that also, if it's not mining, it could be something else. Look, I've seen pictures of people making render farms since Vega came out that look a lot like mining rigs. You know, Ampere has got over 30 teraflops. It's never going to be useful just for gaming. As gaming graphics cards get stay very general purpose and get incredibly high amounts of bandwidth and teraflops, those teraflops are more lucratively put towards non-gaming things for 99.999% of people that would want to spend that much on it. Now, there's, of course, people that have the money that either stream for a living and want the best gaming graphics card for that reason or just have the money and want a game at really high resolutions. But there's also a lot of people that can make money off of these, whether they're mining or not, and they're going to be buying these cards. And at a certain point, it seems like AMD and NVIDIA don't care. They're just happy to make money either way. So hopefully I cleared up some misconceptions about why the mining boom happens the way it does. I, I don't want to end on a sour note, but at the end of the day, the tools these companies have to, co to, to stop miners from buying the cards or wanting to buy the cards are incredibly limited. And I guess the last, I guess the solace we can have is that I really do feel a lot of people like those buying up laptops that are over a thousand dollars are going to end up losing a lot of money in a gold rush that is the third wave this isn't new we've done mining it's much more competitive you get far lower returns than in 2017 and if it crashes they're gonna have a lot of lost money and then that's when the market will be flooded so it's almost like there's this cyclical nature where you might just start looking for used cards every two years every time it crashes because that's just kind of what's happening hope i helped out hope i uh, taught people or brought up some conversations that people weren't thinking about. Remember to subscribe to Moore's Laws and ring the bell button for all things involving gaming hardware. And of course, consider supporting us on Patreon where we'll be discussing this in the Discord and where we take your reader mails and create content that's ad-free for you. All right, thank you for watching.